When I tell y'all, the local news coverage in Florida is quite possibly the best coverage I have that it exists in the country. I don't know what, I guess it's because it's Florida, right? You know, we always got some crazy stuff going on, really. So <laughs> when, when I sit down and actually begin to watch random news stories, you're drawn in like it's a damn action movie because you would think that some of the stuff that happens here can only be true in fiction movies, but unfortunately, once again, this is Florida. And only in Florida can you have something like 25,000 COVID-19 tests be wrong and thrown out, and it doesn't make the national news. But then they'll complain about something regarding DeSantis that isn't even true. So we have a whole, we're like a whole different world when it comes to literally everything, okay? now. Uh, unfortunately, we're very similar to the rest of the world when it comes to ignorant and racist police officers. Because in South Florida, surprise, surprise, that's where I live and that's also where I got the hell beat out of me. Uh, two South Florida police officers are now facing investigations for incendiary posts. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Two South Florida law enforcement officers are facing investigations by their police departments after they made incendiary comments on their social media platforms. Comments posted on the page of Sergeant David Carlin, a Broward Sheriff's Office deputy, have landed him on restricted duty because <laughs> this is Broward. They don't suspend officers. This is the same Broward County that manufactured crap to sell to the residents of downtown Broward to gentrify the area. They don't get suspended for being racist. They just get put on restricted duty. At least, I guess that way they can go out and kill somebody on duty, maybe? I guess. Let's continue. Um, the social media posts say things like, What is privilege? Privilege is wearing $200 sneakers when you've never had a job. Privilege is wearing $300 Beats headphones while living on public assistance. Privilege is the ability to go to a march against and protest against anything that triggers you without worrying about calling out of work. I want y'all to think about that. I want y'all to think about that. He says it's privilege to go to protest. Last time, no, 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 excuse me. It's not a privilege. I don't know if you read the same constitution I read. First of all, that's a right. And second of all, what work, idiot? Well, we just got back to work. What are you talking about? But this is, this is what we've been dealing with, right? These type of ignorant people who can go on social media and have their little echo chamber confirm all their biases, but God forbid, you ask them to come in front of a camera, you ask them to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about, they get exposed. But clearly, he is referring to black people. And if we're being frank, he is a dumbass. My opinion. Okay, my opinion. But they always say when, it's, when people say something stupid, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, though. It's my opinion. You can just get over it if you don't like it. Nah. But you know what privilege is? When all you have to worry about is $200 sneakers and whether or not somebody has them on. All you have to worry about is a $300 pair of Beats and why, you have to, and why they have them on. All you have to worry about is someone going in or calling out of work before a protest because that's what you have to worry about, right? Is making sure your job is secure because as long as your job is secure, everything is good for you, right? Isn't that nice for all my black people, my brown people out there? Isn't it nice to only have to worry about how your bills or someone else's bills get paid? That would be such a relief, ladies and gentlemen. It really would. I would love to not worry about getting pulled over for being black or being fired for being black, which actually basically just happened to one of my good friends for not being hired for being black. Luckily, I don't have a quote unquote black name. My name is kind of ambiguous, but I know a lot of people who feel like they've been denied opportunities because of their name. There has been, there have been multiple studies that have concluded that CEOs were refusing to hire executives for corporations because black people were quote unquote 
more likely to be on drugs. And it turned out that was a lie. It was white people that were more likely, white males specifically that were more likely to be drug addicts. So there's that. I mean, there's a reason why uh, if you go to Boca Raton, which is in, in South Florida, uh, it's considered the rehab capital of the world and is almost exclusively a bunch of white people. White guys, mostly. So uh, it would be nice to not have to worry about one day explaining to my future child that someone is going to literally hate them, hate their existence because of the color they were born with. It is so nice that you get to worry about somebody else's money and how they spend it. That's just, what would you call that? Oh, that's right, that is what privilege is. People can find $300 beats for $150 if they want to. And if they want to spend their money after living in poverty, they want to treat themselves to something nice every now and then. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm sure this man spends money he's not supposed to spend all the time for himself. Imagine living in a constant state of anxiety because you're black in a country that rejects blackness. Oh, excuse me. They only reject blackness when it's time to care about black people, when it's time to actually be black. They love our music in our clothes, in our movies, and even the women, and I mean, they love the guys, but as long as you're not being black or have to deal with the blackness in your face, then they're okay with it. It's crazy, the article goes on to say, another post says in part, I'm sorry, but if you're still struggling with slavery, I'm still struggling with the Vikings in invading England in the eighth century and enslaved my re relatives. First of all, that that was a literal quote from the tweet. So I, I know how to talk. Um, he just doesn't know how to type or spell or what past tense and present. Anyway, uh, do y'all know when redlining and do you know what redlining is people redlining is when um, basically black people were kept from getting business loans from taking second mortgages on their houses, from buying houses in certain neighborhoods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those loans instead were given to uh, Arabs of a lighter hue, um, Chinese people, what is, has come to be known as the quote unquote modern minorities uh, in our neighborhoods. Do you know when this practice was technically ended? Early 2000s, technically speaking. And even still, Jim Crow hasn't, as long as the education in this country is funded by 93% of property, 93% by property taxes, then we still haven't even got rid of all the Jim Crow laws. Redlining was literally a Jim Crow law. There was an attempt to end it in the Nixon era and he fought them every step of the way, but it really didn't end until early 2000s. He's talking about eighth century, full slavery was in the 19th century. It's only 200 years ago. Depending on how old you are, there are peoples, there are people alive right now whose grandparent was a slave. My mom was born, if my mom would have been a few years younger, just a few years younger, my mom is young. My mom's only 51 years old. If my mom would have been born a few years earlier, she would have experienced segregation full-fledged. Do you understand that? The, the, did the KKK disappear? Did, didn't the FBI just drop a, a, a report saying that white supremacy is present in literally all of the police forces around the country and we did nothing about it? Did, did racism just disappear because slavery? Because like, because that's what happened, right? So y'all know that marriage equality got passed 2014-ish, 2013, 2014. Everybody just stopped being homophobic. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Everybody stopped being homophobic the moment marriage equality became legal. Y'all didn't know? Homophobia is dead, y'all. The whole LGBTQ community just stopped marching, y'all. There's nobody. A trans person did not just get beat up the other day. Right? Transphobia is dead. Nah, marriage equality is legal. Transphobia is, is dead. They can get married, whatever they want to do. They can have whatever surgeries they want to. It's cool. It's legal. Man. And these people are given badges and guns. Mm. 
The Broward Sheriff's Office said Carlin is a Broward County Jail supervisor. Oh, sweet Jesus. And these posts have landed him in the middle of an investigation. He's since been put on restricted duty. The Broward County Jail that is predominantly black, filled with black people. And he's been, and he was put in charge. <laughs> Another post includes a picture of a seagull on the beach resting on top of a pair of basketball shoes. The text reads, apparently this seagull got his stimulus check. But systemic racism isn't real, y'all. What are y'all talking about? What are y'all protesting about? Um, Ron Jackson, excuse me. Deputy Ron Thurston was also put on restricted duty this week, uh, in or excuse me, earlier this week in June, uh, after posting about a lack of diversity in the sheriff's office. Think about that, people. Think about that. So, Ron Thurston is actually supported by a pastor around here named Alan Jackson. And he says, it's disgusting what that other officer posted, the racist one. But at the same time, the same restrictive duty that the racist officer was put on, the officer who said that the department lacked diversity was also put on the same restricted duty. Once again, this is some Florida shit. <laughs> Clearly. This is not surprising to me because it's Florida. But also, because we live in America and for some reason everybody has completely forgotten what the hell country we live in. This is, this is America. The only reason that one is on restricted duty and the other one is not on restricted duty, or excuse me, that was not, the other one was not put on restricted duty earlier is because, well, the social media posts didn't get publicized until later. But the guy who was asking for more diversity was put on restricted duty already. Think about that. Think about that, people. That means the leadership within Broward County punished someone for asking for more diversity. That's insane. Reeve Barker, thank you so much for the super chat. My friend is Palestinian, first generation here. I see firsthand my white privilege when I'm with him. But we can't tell my brother, my mom, and stepfather that there is privilege. They act like we are crazy. Yeah, that's life, man. That's, that's, I know, it's, it's crazy. It's, you can literally, and it's crazy because I feel like people get offended if you mention what someone else goes through. Isn't that weird? Like, they get, it's because it's like, it's almost like you know it's true. <laughs> and you don't want to admit that you didn't get everything on your own, that you may have had some advantages over some other people, that you still might have some advantages over some other people. Can't, they can't possibly, I can admit it. I can admit as a man, I have a plethora of advantages over women when it comes to uh, the business world and things like that and being taken seriously. I can even admit that as a lighter skinned black male, I'm not even light skinned, but I'm lighter than a lot of black people. And there's a certain amount of privilege that comes with that while being on camera, while being involved in politics. If I can admit that, like, as a man, why is it so hard for people who, to admit as white people who have literally had every advantage you could possibly think of? Like the American dream was possible for them and there was not gonna be anything that stopped them really other than their hard work. They didn't have an entire race who was in power dedicated to stopping them from achieving the quote unquote American dream. That is what white privilege is. And by the way, the American dream nowadays especially means being able to actually live until you're 35 without worry, being worried about being killed for being black or brown. Being able to pursue that dream without being deported because the visa laws basically favor rich people and white people who come from those countries. So if you like that segment of Mikasa and Sukasa, don't forget to like the video and smash that subscribe button. Want access to members only live streams, behind the scenes footage, and other premium content? Well, you can endorse us on Rockman Premium, become a patron through Patreon, or you can sign up for the MCSC Premium membership through YouTube. 
All the links are in the description below. But hey, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, always remember, find your balance, 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 always remember, more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.